Hey guys, happy Wednesday, Mr. Branscombe here. So I am out today actually. Um, and so anyway, we're gonna continue on meet judging. And so um, I've got um, a video here that I've recorded before that's gonna go through everything you need to know meet judging. There's gonna be two different assignments of twice the grade. So be sure to fill those out and have those done at the end of the hour. And so anyway, without further ado, we're gonna dive into um, a couple of things with meat science today. But we're gonna talk about meat judging meat judging and this is really important because we're going to learn different cuts of meat we're going to learn how to evaluate them how to judge them i know last semester we talked about the actual processing part we're not going to get to that a whole lot we're going to talk about grading the actual qualities okay um so today we're going to just kind of kick off by talking about dressing percent in cattle and what exactly that means um, now i will tell you the video that i'm sharing with you today is kind of an added to adaptation of a video that I created for my in-person students when I was actually lecturing in class. So when I mentioned a couple of things like um, jump in there and you know um, write this down on your notes, obviously that's not going to apply to you guys, but it still gives you the general idea. So don't worry about the note part. Don't let that confuse you. You're not taking any notes today, but you are gonna take a quiz at the end of this video. So I wanna make sure that you guys understand how to calculate dressing percent because as a producer and as a meat processor this is the first step in understanding meat science All right, the next part of our lesson that we want to look at today as you can see mr branskip loves to dress up but today we're going to talk about a term that i want you to know called dressing percent and it's actually answer number three on your question today okay the question asks you what is the term for the amount of the animal that is actually useful to eat, okay? So, as you look on the screen right here, look, oh, no, I'm gonna switch directions. As you look right here, sorry, I'm learning technology, we see a picture of Bessie. Bessie the cow, everyone say, hi, Bessie. Don't be weird and be quiet because it's up here. Look at the screen and say, hi, Bessie. So as we look at Bessie the cow right here, Bessie the cow is fixing to be butchered. Now when we buy Bessie the cow, we buy Bessie the cow by the pound. So if we sell her for $1.50 a pound and she weighs 1,000 pounds, then I'm gonna buy her for $1,500, okay? I'm gonna buy her by the pound. So the more Bessie weighs, the more I'm going to spend, okay? Typically. But the issue is this. If I buy Bessie, does every little bit of Bessie turn into this? Nod your head or shake your head. Which one? Yeah, the answer is no. It definitely does not. Okay? So, when we look at Bessie here, as usual, Mr. Branson kind of blanks for a second here. We need to think about how much of her is actually useful. How much of her is actually useful? How much of her is going to provide me with a real product? Because we're gonna go from Bessie right here to Bessie right here. Ooh, that's kind of morbid, right? There's a big difference between the two, but we have her hanging on the rail, okay? So in question number three, A, A, the first one under question number three, it asks you, okay, what is the term for the weight of the animal when it is slaughtered? And the answer is live weight. So for A in question three, I want you to write that down for me. Live weight, okay? Live weight is how much they weigh when they're alive, right? It's pretty simple, how do we figure that out? Bessie runs across the scales before we butcher her, and we're gonna see, ah, she weighs 1,200 pounds. We're just never that exact. She weighs 1,182.6 pounds. So we see that weight that she does, okay? So that's what we see right here, that is live weight. So AO number three is live weight. Make sure you write that down, okay? Now, we butcher the animal, we harvest her, if I'm going to say, it sounds like a much more pleasant word. So we harvest Bessie and we take off all the parts that we don't want, right? In general, we're not gonna eat the head. Unless you're a real, real weird person, I'm assuming you're not gonna eat the hide or the skin of the cow. We're not gonna eat its hoofs, right? You're not gonna eat the food in its belly. You're not gonna eat its intestines. All of this stuff we are going to remove from Bessie. And once again, Bessie's gonna go from this to this. And this is the next term I want you to know. I want you to write this down for me. 
This is B. This is B on number three. And it is hot carcass weight. Write that down for me. Hot, H-O-T, carcass. C-A-R-C-A-S-S, -S, carcass weight. Spell weight, you know that, okay? Hot carcass weight. And hot, car hot carcass weight is how much that animal weighs hanging on this rail after it is butchered. Why is it called hot, Mr. Branscombe? Well, because what do we do with these animals after we've butchered them? Well, we've got to freeze them. Why do we freeze them? Because we need to kill all that bacteria and let it kind of cure. It's kind of funny when Wendy's and some of those commercials are like, our beef was never frozen. Yes, actually it was. The cow was frozen after it was butchered. All beef has probably been frozen. So we take this carcass and we freeze it. Before we freeze it, we weigh it. And this is the percent of the animal that's actually useful. Now, is all of this meat? No. Some of it's fat, some of it's meat, and some of it is bone. But it is essentially useful retail cuts. I can take this and I can cut it down and I can sell it to you, okay? So, we have live weight. We have hot carcass weight, okay? One is the animal that just weighs what it weighs when I kill it. The other one is the actual useful weight that I can sell for lots of money. And I can sell it for a lot more dollars a pound. This ribeye steak right here that I'm holding in my hands, $10 a pound, right? A heck of a lot more than the $1.50 a pound that I paid for Bessie. But this brings me to question number, or sorry, the third part, C, of number three, and that is the term for the percent of the animal that is useful, and that is called dressing percent. Dressing, D-R-E-S-S-I-N-G. Yes, D-R-E-S-S-I-N-G. I had to think about that. There's a reason I don't teach English. There's the reason I will not count off for spelling today. Dressing percent is the percent of the animal that is actually useful to eat. So how do I get that number? Okay, here's how I get that number. I take the hot carcass weights and I divide it by the live weight, okay? Hot carcass weight divided by live weight times in it by 100. I feel like I'm doing a TikTok dance right now, okay? Hot carcass weight divided by live weight times 100, okay? And that's how we determine how much the animal is useful. Obviously, the higher the dressing percent, the better, right? It means the less of the animal that I actually wasted, okay? Um, so, um, actually, if we look right here, what is an ideal dressing percent? Check out this chart right here. You can see the ideal dressing percent of cattle is somewhere around 57 to 64 percent. So that means roughly 40 percent of Bessie has been cut off, has been trimmed, doesn't really have a useful, it does, but it doesn't have that useful purpose in terms of retail cuts of meat that we can actually use, okay? So that is the big difference there, okay? So we have 60% of her that's actually worth a lot. We have 40% of her that's trimmed off, like I said, the hide, the head, different things like that. The higher the dressing percent, the better. And this is calculated in all sorts of things, okay? Actually, those chickens that we had down in our barn. See this thing right here, okay? I'm looking at this thing right here and what the dressing percent is. So this carcass of this chicken right here, this was down in the barn just a couple days ago, running around, crowing, okay? And it weighed roughly 10 pounds, 10 and a half pounds, when it was butchered, okay? So let's say 10 pounds to make my math easier, okay? This bird weighed 7 point, this carcass right here, it's not a hot carcass, it's frozen now, but let's pretend like it is. So the carcass weight of this animal is actually 7.25 pounds. So what does that tell me? If I take 10 pounds that it weighed when it was alive and I divide it by that, okay, I'm going to get a 72.5 dressing percent. And that's actually pretty good for a chicken, okay? So 72.5% of this animal is useful. Now remember all the terms that we learned about chickens a long time ago when we covered poultry. Some of this animal was not used. The head, the beak, the legs, the intestines, the proventriculus, the gizzard, the crawl, all of those terms trashed. We didn't save any of those, at least I didn't save any of those, okay? And instead I ended up with this 7.25 pounds, so I had 72. Tying this all back together and closing, remember we have the live weight, which is what the animal weighs prior to slaughter. We have the hot carcass weight. To determine dressing percent, we take that hot carcass weight, 
we divide it by the live weight and we multiply that by a hundred. Okay. The higher the dressing percent, the more money I make off that animal. So one, um, the last thing I want to talk about kind of is the traits that will raise and lower dressing percent. Remember, muscle is meat. So the more muscle an animal has, the more fat an animal has. That will lead to higher dressing percent. The bigger bones, because we actually do keep that bone on there. Think about bone-in steaks. What are some things that will hurt dressing percent? Will it be anything that we don't actually use? So this could be an animal that has a full belly because it's eating a lot of hay and grass. This could be an animal with an udder. We're obviously not going to eat the udder. Loose, flabby skin. Horns, all of those are weighted things that the animal will not use, okay? We look at our ideal dressing percents, and you're going to see this chart on your quiz today, actually. Um, you'll see, for example, um, turkeys, um, pigs and chickens, they dress out really, really good. Cattle have a lower dressing percent, so we waste more. And then lambs and goats have the lowest dressing percent. Only about half of them is actually used in terms of using for meat, okay? So here's my example once again for problems. So right here we have an Angus steer that has a carcass weight of 650 pounds, and it weighs 1,000 pounds. That's its live weight. So we take that 650 and we divide that by 1,000. That's going to give you a 0.65. We move the decimal over two places, and the dressing percent for Bessie is 65%. If I look at this right here, this Duroc pig weighs 300 pounds alive. Its hot carcass weight is 200 pounds. So if I divide that right there, I'm going to get 0.667. If I move the decimal place over two places, this dressing percent is going to be 66.7%. That's taking that 200 from the hot carcass weight, dividing that by the live weight of 300, okay? With this goat, we have a 200-pound live goat, but it weighed 120 pounds on the reel after it had been processed. So 120 divided by 200. Remember, it should never be over 100%, obviously. You can't gain weight after you kill them. But this is going to give you 0.6, which is 60%. So these are some examples. And then what you're going to do on your quiz is you're going to calculate those. And then I'm going to ask you, is it better than average or worse than average based on this chart right here? So that's going to give you a little indicator of dressing percent. Hey guys, so happy Tuesday. We're going to dive into another video today looking at quality grades, determining how juicy and tasty something is going to be. So I want you to watch this. Once again, this is the second of two lecture videos in which I taught this to my in-person students. So don't be confused once again when I say fill this in in your notes or write this down. This doesn't apply to you guys, but knowing the quality grades is important because you're actually going to fill out a PowerPoint today in which you identify those right there. Okay. So check this out. Um, just know that you guys are all, almost all of you will be buying steaks at some point in your life. And this is going to help you pick out that better tasting steak. All right. So as we come back from your pause break, I hope you got these right. Now, the next thing we're looking at is look at this juicy steak. Oh man, good thing you guys just came back from lunch. Doesn't that look incredible? That looks juicy. And that could be yours today if you pay or tomorrow if you pay attention. Subs gonna let me know how you guys behave. But if we look at this steak right here, there's a couple of things that I want you to notice, and that is indicators of how tasty this steak is going to be. So Question number five, as we move down our sheet, is a term called palatability. Palatability. And question number five asks you, what are the three words that describe palatability? Well, first of all, what does palatability mean? Well, palatability means how tasty something is. Okay, so I'll bet if I pulled this class, most of you would consider ice cream very palatable, meaning very delicious, very tasty. You like to eat it. I like a whole carton of it today. Not kidding. I like rated a dollar general. Okay. Um, on the other hand, if you were to pull me, I would not consider Brussels sprouts very palatable. 
okay? I would think those are actually pretty gross and disgusting. So what does that term mean? There's, it basically means how good something tastes. So there are three words that I want you to write down. What are the three words that describe palatability? The first one, tenderness. Write that down for me because I said, what are the three words that describe palatability? The first one, tenderness. Okay, how tender something is, right? We want a steak that is nice and tender, okay? The second one, juiciness. Juiciness. Okay, we don't want a steak that is dry. We've all had a dry steak. Oh, it is disgusting, gross, nasty, okay? We have tenderness, we have juiciness, and the third one is flavorful flavorful okay so we have tenderness juiciness flavorful and the flavorful sometimes we use seasoning sometimes we use uh, like I said different types of rubs or marinades or different things like that to make it delicious but the steak also has some natural flavor or maybe some of you guys raise your hand if you like to put some kind of steak sauce on your steak be honest put them up okay those students um, I would like for the substitute um, she would write down everyone's name who raised their hand, and I want to be sure to fail them in my class because a good steak should stand alone. We shouldn't ruin it with all that nasty steak sauce. Come on now. But no, palatability, tenderness, juiciness, flavorful. How delicious is this steak? And not all steaks are created equal. There's a reason why you can go to Walmart and you can buy $5 steaks, and you can go to a steakhouse and spend several hundred dollars on incredibly juicy amazing steaks two totally different experiences and it's based on the quality of that steak even though it may come from the same part of the animal maybe it may be the exact same steak like a ribeye steak right here that i have okay so we look at these cuts we want to talk about palatability we want to make sure that it's tender we're going to make sure it's juicy we want to make sure it's flavorful okay and that leads to quality grades we're going to talk about quality grades today and quality grades are essentially a grade that we put on this meat right here that helps me charge you more money for it. And it helps you know that the meat is going to be delicious. So we move to number six in your deal. We talk about quality grades. There are two types of things that factor into quality grades. Good long horns, right? Two different things, okay? The first one, and write this down for me, this will be A for number six, and that is maturity. Maturity. The first thing is maturity. Okay, as we mentioned with veal, the older an animal gets, the tougher it gets, the less juicy it gets, okay? If you go out to a pasture and bring in a 12-year-old mama cow and butcher her, do you think we're going to keep her steaks? No. What are we going to do with that meat? Does anybody know? Anyone know? What we do with the steaks on an old mama cow. We grind it all up and make ground beef. We make hamburger meat out of it because it's not very good, okay? Now, if we take a two-year-old or a year-and-a-half-year-old steer, that's what I'm looking at right here, okay? Much more delicious, much more tender, okay? So, we have maturity grades, and there are different maturity grades. There is an A, I think, through F. We're going to like a school grading system right here. And A maturity is anywhere between about six months old and 30 months old, okay? And that's that ideal range. We get older than two and a half years, and we're getting a little bit tougher, okay? So that's an A maturity, just like an A in my class is better than an F, and A maturity is the best. So the first thing, when we look at the two factors that impact their, their quality grade or their palatability, the first one is maturity. The second one is called marbling. <clears throat> I'm going to show you these, and tomorrow we're going to literally taste the difference, okay? What is marbling, Mr. Branscom? We really have two types of fat on Bessie here, okay? The first type of fat is the outside fat. So you guys see this right here? Most of you guys don't like the taste of this fat right here. Most of you do not think that that is delicious right there, and that's okay, okay? But that fat right there... We, a lot of times we trim it off. A lot of times you don't want to eat it, but the fat that you do want to eat are these little flakes of fat, little small pieces of fat all throughout the, this meat, okay? Does anyone know what these types flakes of fat are called? 
The answer is marbling. Hopefully someone yelled marbling at the computer. Okay, Branscom here's all, just not in real time, okay? All of these tiny flakes of fat in the steak right here are called marbling. There's a big old piece of marbling running across. See that big piece right there? That's a big old piece of marbling running across, but all these little pieces right here. So as the steak cooks, you don't have a big old chewy piece of fat in the middle. You have this really tender juiciness that breaks down. It's what makes your meat tender, juicy, flavorful, palatability, okay? So that's marbling. Look at the difference of these two cuts of steak. I wanna show you guys these, okay? And I think you're gonna be able to see a difference, okay? So as I hold these up the screen right here, do you think the one on your left or the one on your right is going to be juicier? Let's take a little poll. Everyone's gonna raise your hand for this, okay? How many of you think the steak on the right is going to be juicier? That is this one right here. How many of you think that the steak on your right is going to taste better? It's going to have be juicier and more flavorful. How many of you think this steak, the steak on the left, is going to be tastier? Okay, the answer is actually pretty clear. It's going to be this one because as you look at this one, it has a lot more marbling. It has a better quality grade. Okay, so I know that this one is more tenderful, that's a word, more tender, more juicy, more flavorful, and it is going to get a better grade. And there's a reason why these two actually have a different price point. Now, it's not like exactly like a, a massive difference, but that one on the left that most of you guys hopefully raised your hand for, they're both ribeyes, right? They're both, um, one's certified beef, one's not, okay? But this one right here is actually certified a certain grade, which we'll talk about, and they're selling it for $14 a pound. This one has a lower grade, and they're selling it for less than $10 a pound. So there's a $4 a pound difference between these two steaks right here. That's not massive. That's not incredible, okay? But it does show you the difference because clearly the marketers think that that one on the left is going to be tastier and juicier, and that's why they're gonna sell a lot more of them, okay? So, let's look at these, okay? You will look on your sheet of paper. The next question talks about qualities of grain, okay? Qualities of grain. And when we talk about quality grades, it's based on, once again, two things. Maturity, how old they are, and how much marbling they have, okay? Maturity. How we know how old an animal is actually by looking at their teeth, okay? Or if we butcher an animal, it's actually gonna be how far apart their ribs are. So we can see that carcass hanging on the rack and as they get older, their ribs kind of space out a little more, slant a little more and get a little more flat, okay? But that's not important for you necessarily to know today because you're probably not gonna butcher your own cow. That's okay. Um, so the highest grade of beef, the best beef of all is called Prime, prime, and look at that picture right there. That is a prime steak, and no, that is not what I showed you right there, and that's definitely not what I'm feeding you in class tomorrow because Mr. Branscombe's not that rich. But prime steak, as you look at this picture of this juicy, majestic steak, this is actually the, the um, A on your next question, the highest grade of beef is called prime. Prime steaks are obviously from younger animals, maturity A, but also, we're looking at meat that is very rich in marbling, okay? This is that expensive steak that we would buy at a steakhouse. Look at that, just dripping with marbling. That marbling is gonna melt. Ooh, I hope your mouth is watering like mine. It's gonna melt, and it's gonna make a delicious, juicy, flavorful steak. Oh, it's gonna be so good, okay? And so that is that steak right there. That's called prime steak, P-R-I-M-E, prime. And that is the top number one grade of steak, okay? And you can see it by the marbling. Now, as we go from that one, let's move to the second quality. So this is B on your answer. And that is choice, choice, okay? And a choice steak is going to be um, this steak I showed you right here, okay? You can get this at Texas Roadhouse. You can buy even a Walmart. When I was a kid, Walmart definitely didn't offer choice steaks, but today they do, okay? And we look at choice steaks, you're gonna see, still looks pretty good. You see the marbling breakdown around it, it still looks really delicious. 
Um, however, it is not as tender, it is not as juicy, it's not as flavorful as a prime steak, but still pretty good looking steak right there, okay? That's a choice steak, so that's, and the third cut of steak that we're gonna talk about today is actually this one right here, and that grade of steak is called a select, select, S-E-L-E-C-K, T, sorry, not K. Select, and select steak has far less marbling, still has some good marbling, but it's going to be a lot cheaper, okay? And those are your three primary grades, okay? We have prime, which is the best, we have choice, and we have select. Now, what you'll see at a store is this. If there, are, if there is prime steak sold somewhere, we used to have 1907 Meat Company here in town. I bet a lot of you guys have been there before. I'm pretty sure they had prime steak. That's going to be labeled choice. It actually says that right up here. In fact, if I zoom into the camera right here, running back here to you, you guys can see it says Angus, and then below that it says premium choice beef, choice. So it is labeled as choice. Now this select steak right here is not actually labeled as a select, okay? So I want you to think about this. Raise your hand if this applies to you, okay? How many of you, if... Uh, Ms. Szymanski, the principal, came to you today and said, when we do report cards this spring, we're going to give you an opportunity to hide a little bit of stuff from your parents. And here's what I mean by that. You can either get a report card that has your grades like A, B, C, D, F, or you can get a report card that just says pass or fail. And so all your parents need to know is in ad class, you passed if you passed. And they don't have to know that you had like a 62.4 in the class. All they know is that you passed. How many of you would take our principal up on that? Raise your hand. Yeah, a lot of you, if you have lower grades, you just kind of told on yourself. If you have lower grades, that's going to apply to you. You're like, I don't know. All my parents need to know is that I passed. Now, all those of you over here that have like a 99.5, you're like, heck no. I want my parents to see that I got a 99.5 in here. All those virtual assignments he put online, I crushed those, okay? There's a difference. Those of you that have good grades, you want the world to see it. Those of you that have bad grades, you kind of want that to be hidden. Same thing right here. If we have a prime steak, they're going to put a prime steak across it. They want people to know that so they can charge you more money. If it is a select steak, they're going to be like, hey, look at this steak. It passed inspection. It's tasty. Eat it. We're not going to tell you, hey, we had the third grade, the third of all the grades of meat. Okay? Okay? They're not going to let you know that. So that's kind of the difference in those right here. So we have prime, choice, select. Right here, this chart right here is essentially an indicator of how we're going to get these. So you'll notice we have the degrees of marbling on the left. So slightly abundant is a lot. Um, all the way down to practically devoid at the bottom, which means essentially like none, okay? And you'll notice our maturity. It's like I mentioned, A maturity is going to be an animal that has a very young, is going to be under 30 months. And then we get to B, C, D, E. Those are animals that are older. So you notice prime animals, prime steaks come from animals that are very young. So they have that young maturity up here, and they have tons of marbling. When we move down to choice, we look at animals who are still young, but have less marbling. And then select, we talked about select. Below that we have standard, and standard has practically devoid, meaning like basically none. There are some ones here on the, the right side, um, like commercial utility and cutter, and these are just animals that are, are meat that's gonna come from older animals. So just kind of know the difference of those right there. And so, like you can see, we're gonna balance both the age and the marbling of that animal, and that's how we're gonna get but there's one grade of Eve that is even better than prime. And it is because of the, the breed of cow that it comes from. And this is called Kobe beef, kind of spelled like Kobe Bryant. And this is, the um, I think, the last question on your notes for today. Kobe beef. And Kobe beef is a special type of beef that comes from a breed of Japanese cattle called Wagyu. And these cattle are genetically altered in some weird way in which they make an incredible amount of marbling, which makes that meat very juicy and very tender and very flavorful, okay? Um, there are only about 3,000 Wagyu cattle in the world 
that are killed each year. Very, very few. And so you look at that meat right there, and their meat is even better than prime. I mean, it is just covered. And I've actually had some Kobe beef before. I think it has a little too much. For me, I think it's a little greasy, but that's just a personal preference. This is what the Japanese Wagyu cattle look like. So they're not super impressive. They're not like physical specimens that you're like, that looks like a good steak right there. But those animals right there give you a good indicator of that it's going to be that because that's Kobe beef. And that is the best grade cut of animal right there. Kobe beef. You can't buy this at a store. Um, it sells for a lot of money. Okay. I've seen restaurants on the West Coast where a Kobe burger, just a cheeseburger from Kobe beef is going to sell for well over a hundred dollars. So we're talking just the cabin.